excuse the attire. I'm not supposed to be sitting here looking at you. I was supposed to have driven four and a half hours to the side of the country, to Kent, but my event got cancelled as I was driving there. So I've come back and I thought I'd do this video, which I thought I'd finally get around to doing on the Fujifilm X-T5. Now, this is a long-term review. I've had this camera since it came out, whenever that was. So I picked it up on the day it was released and um, I've used it professionally every day since. Now, I've been in the ecosystem of Fujifilm for about nine years. So I've shot, I started off in XT1, XT2, XT3, uh, XT4, XT5, XH1, uh, X100 VX Pro 2. So I've, I've had a lot of experience with Fuji over the years in a professional environment. Now, I'm a commercial photographer. I shoot a lot of uh, products, a lot of events. I do a lot of filming. I do a lot of portraits. I do a lot of architecture, inter interior, that sort of stuff. So I use, uh, and obviously street, street and landscape photography as well. Um, more so on YouTube. So I use Fuji a lot. I use Fujifilm every single day and I've really, really uh, become very emotionally attached to the ecosystem. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about what I love and what needs to be improved with the Fuji system going forward in general, not necessarily just this camera, but yeah, that's what we're gonna get onto today. But just as a bit of a spoiler, this is probably one of the, my favorite cameras I've ever owned. So yeah, <laughs> just get that in there straight away. So the Fujifilm X-T5, I'll be comparing mainly to my X-T3. Now I've just re-bought this camera because when I picked up the X-T5, I actually partexed my X-T3 at Command and Cameras and I've had to buy another X-T3 for an event, well, the event today actually. <laughs> so uh, I've not actually used that X-T3 yet, but I, the X-T3 was one of my favorite cameras for a long term, for a long time, and that was mainly as a photographer. I just love the ergonomics, I love the screen, I love everything, apart from the battery and apart from the autofocus and uh, a, few, a few of the niggles as well. So when the X-T5 was announced, that it was basically going to be an X-T3 on absolute steroids, I was a little bit excited. And to, to hear that it wasn't going to have the flip screen of the X-T4, which we're filming on now, I, uh, I was more than, yeah, I was more than a bit pleased, let's say. I've got to say straight away, though, this is an almost perfect camera. There's not much I dislike about it. There's a few little niggles, but there's not much about it. I just think, especially with the new, the new ecosystem, the new lenses that Fuji are bringing out, this is the 33mm 1.4 and it is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. This combination, this, 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 uh, the X-T5 with the new th 33 is absolutely fantastic. It's a bit heavy for street photography, but as a, as a professional setup, uh, this 50 mil prime on this camera is incredibly powerful. I, I, I really, really do. I'm this setup. I am really happy with the, the 50, the 33 and that one, the 56, I'm, I'm not so impressed with, if I'm honest with you, but it is still a phenomenal lens, but doesn't, doesn't compete in my opinion with the 33, but yeah, it's still just a wonderful, wonderful uh, setup. Before we get into the good and bad on the camera, I just want to point out my zine. If you want to support the channel and you're new to the channel and you want to help me make more of these videos and you're into street photography, do check out my zine. And also, if you are interested in a workshop or an online workshop or critiquing your images, jump over. I'll put a link in the in the description. You can jump over to the website, have a look uh, and see if that service is for you. It's a really, really good way of online improving your photography and talking about your street photography, talking about your, your goals or landscape photography, whatever it is. Is you want to, or even it's just going through your Fuji system and just uh, helping you familiarise yourself with the cameras and getting a bit more, a bit more confident using the actual cameras. But jump over to the website, check out my zine. Uh, I'm on issue two at the minute, so issue three will be coming out next month. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that together. So issue uh, one or two has been absolutely phenomenal, phenomenally well received. So I'm really, really grateful for everybody that's downloaded that and supporting the channel. So uh, yeah, thanks so much. Let's get back into it. We'll just touch on the video aspects of the X-T5. It's absolutely fantastic. I know it is because I'm filming on the X-T4 now. I've had that for years. I've used it professionally for lo loads of my events and, and this sort of video where I can see, no matter what I do, I can see that box is over my face and it never seems to miss focus. So I already love the Fujifilm cameras for video. Absolutely no problem. I love Eterna. I love all the settings that you've got, all the customizability. They're very, very powerful video cameras. Absolutely love them. I've never had an issue, but I don't really use them in very demanding, fast environments that much, if I'm honest. I, I, I'm kind of a lazy videographer. Um, now, what I did notice on the X-T5, you've got this great big red box, which makes it easier for me to see at distance what I'm filming. And instead of the little, tiny little light there, if I'm at the wrong angle, I can't see that tiny little red light there. But I've got a great big red box that goes around the screen there, which is fant fantastic. But it also records past 29 minutes, which has been for concerts, that when I record a piano concert and I can't move at all, it really has been a 
oh, well, I could do with five of these. <laughs> so I'm really good. I'm sure the X-H2 is exactly the same, the X-H2S, uh, but they, they don't have the record limit, so I can record 45 minutes to an hour on it. I always, always plug in on the side there, I always plug in a USB-C power bank. Um, make sure you buy the PD power banks, plug them straight in there. You're bypassing the battery that's in there. It's fantastic. They think you could just leave these things recording. They're absolutely wonderful. So yeah, little PD power bank on the side. This thing records past 29 minutes. Other than that, I couldn't care less. They're absolutely phenomenal. Really, really love them for video. Now, high ISO was something I was worried about when I first got the camera. There wasn't really any information on it. I have to say, even though it's a higher resolution camera, the ISO hasn't really been affected that much. In some cases, it seems cleaner. It's, if there's good light there and the ISO is high, the files look cleaner. I'd say in low light, um, the X-T4 probably looks a bit cleaner. It's probably easier to manage. But to be honest with you, you've got more probability on this when we've got the right lens on it, it looks sharper anyway. So it's kind of a trade off of both, whether or not the ISO is actually affected by the megapixels in the camera. It's not anywhere near, it's not worth worrying about if you're thinking about, if you're worried about the high ISO being affected by the megapixels, it's absolutely not. Right, AFS, hugely improved. If I'm doing commercial photography and I'm back button focusing on a tripod to get the, um, I always, I'm always in manual, I always back button focus to get the, to get the brand's logo sharp or whatever I need to do. When I punch in on the back of the screen using that dial on the back there, when I punch in, the, the, the logo is always sharp. It doesn't seem to miss. It, it does miss, but doesn't nothing like as bad as X-T4, whereas I would focus shoot, focus shoot, focus shoot on the logo to make sure that I got, if I missed one, it would get the next. Um, with this camera, absolutely different story. I can I can reliably back button focus, hit the shutter button, zoom in, and it's sharp. Um, now that's really that's that's lens dependent for sure. I use um, product photography is normally on this twenty four. Uh, what do you call it? Sixteen to fifty five, or you know the fifty one forty, or say say for example on the fifty six mil. That's that that sort of basic setup. Um, and I find it works really, really well. I, I have to say that on the, some of the other lenses it doesn't work so well, but I do find it works well. So single acquisition, single focus acquisition is massively improved. In low light, it's massively improved. Um, and I just trust it more. I also focus in continuous autofocus, still feels, it's a lot better than, than it was. On the X-T4, I'd never use eye autofocus. And on the X100V, you can freaking forget it. Um, it, but this, I, I would use I autofocus. In fact, I do actually use what that custom button at the top there to assign that to switch between I autofocus and off. Um, so it is definitely usable. On the, this 33 mil, it's absolutely, it is probably the best setup for I autofocus. I don't even think it's that good on the new 56, if I'm honest. I think a lot of people are saying that it is. Uh, I don't, in continue, in single it's fine, but not continuous. Um, I, it, if I'm trying to take photographs of the kids running around, I just don't find it works that well at all, um, being honest. Now, if, if I could ask Fuji one thing, it'd be literally just to don't do any more new cameras for the next five years and just concentrate on getting this focusing algorithm right. Because I know that the lenses are capable. It's not the lenses, because the new lenses are phenomenal. It's just something going on with the, with the, um, the algorithm in continuous autofocus. Now, I'm not a sports photographer, but I do do weddings and events, and continuous autofocus is so important, um, but it's so important that it's reliable. So that is probably one of my only things about the camera, is the continuous autofocus. Um, but I will say that it is massively improved over the X-T4, and it's definitely improved over in low light as well. So altogether, I'm sort of eight out of 10 happy with it. I wouldn't, it's not a reason not to buy the camera, but it's it's definitely something you need to, I do need to address and be a bit more honest about. One of the reasons anybody buys a Fujifilm camera is the ergonomics in it. It's just unbeatable. They are absolutely beautiful cameras to use. They're lovely looking things, obviously, but they're just they're just inspiring to use. You want to shoot with them. And the X-T5 is probably the best of it. Now, the only thing I've said, it, oh, you can see there, I've put the grip on the bottom. This uh, is a small rig um, L bracket sort of thing. I've taken that bit off, but it is an L bracket because I've got very, very big hands. And it for me... It, it would be like it'd be like that <laughs> if if I didn't have a grip on it. It's just it's just too small. Now that aside, once you've got the grip on it, and um, which obviously protects the bottom of the camera and gives it a bit more weight, balances it a little bit better, gives you a bit of a workout at the same time. Once you've got your head around that, the ergonomics, the button layout, the customize customization abilities in Fujifilm cameras, particularly the XT5, is absolutely 
unbelievable i just i just can't fault them for that if anything i'd like one more button in, in the top there but every single button i've got i've got uh, assigned on this i've got if i'm in video mode i've got them assigned if i've got them in stills mode i've got them assigned and i use every single one of them it's definitely one of my favorite things about being a fuji shooter is how customizable how tactile i can see my my exposure triangle you know i just love it and i'd, I'd never want to leave this system now what i would like is it when I'm in video mode, which I'm in today, because I was supposed to be filming that event, if I went to stills now, these some of these buttons won't work because I've had to assign them. And every time I'm using this camera professionally for video, I have to reassign two of these buttons, two of these G-pad buttons to, to make sense for video. But then if I flick back to stills or flick back the other way, wherever I'm, that, they're not they're not there because they don't work in in that mode so it'd be nice if the camera remembered the the customization for video and then when you flick to stills it would remember what they were for stills other than that i'd definitely give fujifilm 10 out of 10 um um I, my opinion is obviously make the grip make the make the bodies a little bit bigger but look how easy it is to rectify that one of the things I initially was worried about when I first got the camera was the compatibility with some of the lenses, some of the older lenses. Uh, I'm filming on the 10 to 24 Fuji now on the XT4. That's a really, really good lens, but it's never been one of my favourites because uh, I've always known it's had a limitation as far as being sharp. It's not, it's not the sharpest Fuji lens I own, and I've known that. Now on the 24, 26, whatever it is, megapixel XT4, it's never or XT3. It's never been really that much of an issue. It's easy to sharp. Now I remember doing an event. Um, on the X-T5 when I first got it, a wedding event or whatever it was, and the 1024 and the interior shots I got from that didn't look that sharp. And I, it was noticeable that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll topaz the crap out of them and they, they were all right, but they were they were rescuable. Um, now, what we'll say is most of the other lenses, in fact, I think all of the other lenses, even the 18, the 18 to 55 kit lens is actually fine on the X-T5, weirdly. I'd have thought the 10 to 24 would be optically better than the 18 to 55, but it's actually the 18 to 55 really doesn't seem to have any weaknesses at all on the, on the X-T5. I didn't have the 16 to 80 kit because I don't like the 16 to 80 lens, uh, but I definitely don't think there's any anything wrong with buying an X-T5 with an 18-55, to 55, I think it's a really, really combination, a really, really good combination. Um, now, one of the other things I absolutely adore about the camera, I think I've already mentioned it, is the USB-C on the side. So you, obviously you can charge when you go to, you know, you get five minutes, you can stick your power bank on there. But these are actually, you can actually run the camera on the power bank. So if you were, um, I, I, like the event I would have done today, I would have plugged a PD power bank in there. Pa PD just stands for Power Direct. And they're not expensive. You can get them on Amazon for like 30 quid. Um, if you buy a power bank with PD in the title, you can actually leave these running through a, um, a USB-C. That's absolutely incredible for events or anything, whereas I just need to leave the camera going and not worry about it. So basically, I can film an entire day on one battery, and it's absolutely wonderful. So it doesn't really seem to touch much of the power bank either, but just being able to do that is so, so powerful. In fact, I'm running off a PD power bank now, powering the X-T4. So yeah, it just means I could film all day for this video now, and it wouldn't be an issue. I think file compression is something that people overlook. I was doing a workshop the other day, a street photography workshop. The guy not long had his camera, but the first thing I did when I went through and I'd look at all his settings was change the file compression because he was still taking photographs that were, I don't know, 65 meg. Uh, for street photography, it's completely unnecessary. So by putting um, the, con the compression... Um, on there, it, it just means that you ain't gonna worry about taking photographs of the 40 megapixel camera because you're worried about the file sizes. Well, if you're still with me this far, I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Before we get into the bad parts of the camera, and there aren't many, but before we get into that, just wanna uh, push again. If you uh, if you jumped over and, and checked out my zine, I'd be eternally grateful. It helps me spend more time uh, m making these videos and taking time to actually put them together. So, and obviously going forward, I can invest more time and put more effort into videos and getting out and doing more for you. So, so yeah, do jump over to the website as well. Have a look at the workshops, the online workshops, all that sort of stuff. Check out my website as well. Let me know. It's only been live about three months. So if there's any mistakes, let me know. And uh, yeah, we'll get back into the bad bits. Now, if I'm doing um, commercial, like photographing some a specific person working in a workshop and somebody walks around them, I'll get a box on the back of the camera with my subject's face in it or hitting the eye. And then all of a sudden there'll be somebody that walks up the side of it and the focus will just jump over to that person. And I don't understand why. And you can't seem to override it. It's not like I can just touch my 
subject again and focus will go back to there or on the Nikon I can just tap that the left or right thing if it if it walk if it got the bride next to a bridesmaid it starts picking up the wrong eye I can just knock left and it'll go back to the bride I can't seem to override it on the Fuji if you know what I'm doing wrong or if you've ever seen it it's just basically there's a grayed out box that will appear a long object sort of thing and I've been in the menus and I can't see how you can turn it off I don't actually know what I'm looking for in the menus really but it basically it's like it's auto detecting other objects within the scene and you're like please don't detect please don't detect and all of a sudden it will just like you think is it going to jump over to that other subject and it drives me nuts that I haven't got that full control and that's when I'm in continuous autofocus so just things like that I think that might be an easy fix for firmware though so if they actually do bring out any more Kaizen uh, firmware updates, hopefully they'll sort that one out because that's a bit of annoying, but that's an algorithm based thing isn't it? so maybe they're still learning, I don't know now I've mentioned it before but I'm, I'm not happy with the EVFRS <laughs> I'm really fussy with things and I was looking at a Leica Q the other day and I really want a Leica Q black and white um, and I just, the, on paper the specs are the same, it says that it says that the EVF is the same res on that 3.6 million or whatever it is but it just looks so much better even the Nikon Z7 which again is an old camera seems to be a bit clearer on the EVF I don't know whether it's the magnification I've never been able to understand that side of the uh, of the camera settings but um, it just doesn't seem up to up to par I just really wish for the money you're only paying 200 quid less than the X-H2 and X uh, yeah X-H2 and um, I just think you're getting so much more camera with the X-H2 if you like the ergonomics, if you like flip screen and all that. I just really wish, um, <laughs> I just wish it was a better EVF. I was just desperate for a better EVF. And it's it, it's not bad. It's, it's, it's a lovely camera to use. You don't really notice it that much. But when I go to the X-T4 or the X-T3, I don't actually feel that the X-T3 is garbage or the X-T4 is garbage compared to this. And that's that's the way it should be. It should feel like the, X-T4, the X-T4 and 3 are nowhere as good as this as far as EVF. Um, but it's not. <laughs> That's good in a way because if I get to an event and uh, all my cameras seem uh, the same, it's it's nice. But at the same time, you work, you do want the newer camera to feel better, don't you? As I mentioned, performance on this is lens dependent. So for me, the uh, 56 Mark II, 56 mm Mark II, which I absolutely love that lens. It's such a powerful lens. It's just it just doesn't give me the 85 mil tracking capabilities that I'd want if I was a portrait photographer. So that's one of the things that annoys me. Um, I don't think that lens has got the focus ability that the camera's got, whereas this lens is absolutely phenomenal. So I am looking at the Viltrox 75 mil, which Viltrox have offered to send me to see if that's any better for focusing. The other thing is the 1024, as I mentioned, I just wish that, I mean, I'll probably have to buy the Viltrox 13 mil uh, for, for my architectural interiors and kitchens, that sort of thing, because I just don't feel the 1024 is sharp enough. Or take the 1024, use the 1024 on the X-T3 and upscale the photographs. You obviously just do that and then Topaz the crap out of those files as well. And, you know, we'll end up with, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a rep for Topaz at all, it's just really, really good software. So, um, yeah, I just wish that all the lenses were a bit more compatible, but I get that it's a new that it's a new sensor and it's going forward and the old lenses were 20, they were built for, I think they, I think they, um, what's the word? They re resolve. Is it resolve is that the right? Um, up to about thirty megapixels. So it's, they're not far off, but I think it's just over thirty megapixel that the old lenses resolve. I will say uh, for sports photography again, it's not got the buffer. Absolutely not. It, the buffer fills up on it really, really quick, and it's no problem for me. It absolutely is no issue for me. I literally do uh, at a wedding. I'll shoot five frames a second and or eight frames a second. It's absolutely no problem. Couple of, uh, couple of bursts stop and as long as you've got good fast cards in there you're alright I just wish um, I just wish that was I mean I assume it's, well, it's a lot better on the X-H2 in it so if you want a better buffer you get in the X-H2 simple as that now on the X-T3 one of my favourite things the X-T3 was the cable for the camera for the cable release is there on the X-T3, see that? I don't know if it's sharp. So it's there. So if you do a landscape photography and you've got your cam, you, you've got your screen like that, your cable release goes in the top there. On the X-T4 and X-T5, it's down here. So if you've got your L bracket on a tripod, you can't access that. There must be a reason why they've done it, but it's it's there on the, um, what is it? It's down the bottom anyway. It's down the bottom there on that. I just, oh, <laughs> why do they do that? I mean, please just, on the X-T6 or X-T10 or whatever it is, just put it back up there where it belongs. It's so much flipping easier. Right, the My Menu on this thing. When you buy a Fuji camera, one of the first things you need to do is to go in and create a My Menu. So that's that. So but basically at the bottom of your thing, you've got this My Menu and you can just customize the crap out of it. And it's phenomenal. 
But if I go out of that and go up there, up to video or something, then press menu again, it goes back to video. It doesn't go, I want it, in a way it's good that it remembers where I was, but I'd like it to go to my menu every time, like it does on the X-T3 and I think the X-T4. So every time I press menu, it goes into my menu, which I can assign everything that I want in the friggin' menu. That's the point of it. So it doesn't do it on the X-T5, and I, again, I'm hoping that's a firmware thing, and they can fix it. Please! To conclude, I'm in love with the camera. I am absolutely in love with the camera. I give it sort of... Well, I give it 10 out of 10 for a stills camera for the way I shoot, because I flipping love it. The battery's amazing, iBus is amazing, focus is, single focus is amazing, which suits me. Um, the way I shoot is absolutely fantastic. If my kids are running around, I start to get a bit nervous because I don't want to miss any of their photographs. Um, I've been taking pictures of the kids and stuff like that. I want to I make sure I'm not going to miss anything because it does it does upset me when, when pictures of my kids miss, more so than my commercial work, actually. But um, it does annoy them. Obviously, you've got the user experience. The ergonomics is amazing. The Fuji colors are amazing. Uh, the compact size, the power to size ratio, if that makes any sense. The value for money. What's in that, honestly, is unbelievable for the money. It is unbelievable. Um, I don't even think the lenses are that expensive, to be honest with you. But I just think it's an incredibly powerful work workhorse and it's obviously got the two memory cards as well i'm going to mention the two memory cards i like cameras all cameras now to have a built-in memory i don't understand why my, my drone which is two years old has got a built-in memory i don't understand why everything nothing that these cameras don't have built-in memories but other than that it's fantastic what else is there um i love me fuji colors i love me fast minimal editing i love the fact that if a customer says to me can we have the photographs from the event at the end of the evening i can say yes i can get them right in camera i can give them the jpegs I, everybody's happy no editing for me if there is any editing it's very very minor fuji colors are amazing just shoot everything in classic chrome and jobs jobs are good and um absolutely wonderful you don't need to edit anything i, I love uh, i love the things um for 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 street photography for weddings for events it's fantastic uh, the res upgrade is a huge huge thing for me i love the fact that all my all the details seem to be a lot more professional looking i don't struggle to edit them to get them nice and sharp and everything like that um yeah absolutely lovely uh, and and obviously got still got me screen me, me xt3 screen which i couldn't be happy about that is it i think just needs a better evf and the up, up, update the the uh, algorithms for the um i uh, afc continuous autofocus my have been my my, my black man continuous autofocus so yeah let me know um what you think of that i hope that video wasn't too long it was a freaking lot here i'm probably gonna have to delete half of it um but yeah it's just a wonderful wonderful camera and if you are thinking about getting it um, you'll love it. So hopefully that you found that useful and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to check out my zine if you're into street photography. If you're not into street photography and you want to learn how to um, use your camera and how to become a better photographer, there is no better way than um, than street photography. It is the ultimate way of learning how to use your camera, setting your camera up your way and understanding photography and being ready to see a shot and uh, getting you out and about. So yeah, street photography is a must if you've never tried it. Give it a go. See you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.